Welcome to the Kindred Church Podcast, where we talk about God, faith, and real life. This is Daniel Childs. I'm the host of the podcast and the pastor of Kindred Church. To learn more about how to connect with our community, check out our website at www.kindrednc.church. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We're glad you've tuned in for today's episode. Now, let's talk about God. Well, I want to begin the sermon uh, by making two confessions. And uh, what I'm about to say is very painful in many ways. Um, It's not easy to talk about, but it's important. And it's important that we in the church uh, talk about it and and not shy away from it. Uh, I have been so heartbroken and uh, I've been so angry over the recent days and and weeks as we've seen the the ongoing reality of racial injustice revealed in, in some really horrifying ways. And I know that many of you have been horrified as well. Um, You know, some of us, particularly those of us with privilege, uh, we might have thought that we as a society had progressed beyond these kind of atrocities. Um, We might have thought that that maybe racial injustice was quickly becoming a thing of the past. But George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery and and so many others um, have made it impossible to ignore this, this ugly truth that racial injustice is active and working. And not only in individual hearts and lives, but in some of the most basic social systems in our society. Now, here's the first confession that I want to lift up this morning. Uh, White Christians like me and white churches uh, in this country have been complicit and even enthusiastic participants at times in in helping to create the, the kinds of racial injustices that we see today. Um, I think it's also worth noting that you know, on the other end of the spectrum, there, you know, some of the greatest abolitionists in our country's history, some of the greatest civil rights leaders were, were Christians who were uh, motivated by their Christian faith, by their Christian convictions to, to deconstruct and dismantle racism. But that doesn't change the fact that for those of us who are white Christians, we've got to own up to our history. And as I think about that hard truth, um, as a Christian, and particularly as a pastor, Uh, It causes me to ask the question, uh, where did white Christians go wrong? Where did the white church go wrong? I think in order for us to change, in order for us to be different and and to to make change, uh, we've got to wrestle honestly with that question. Where did the church go wrong? I want to make a a second confession. Uh, When we think about another minority group in our society, um, our brothers and sisters and siblings in the LGBT plus community. Um, the church has done extraordinary harm. Uh, the church in this country, the church uh, around the world, has done uh, spiritual harm, emotional harm, at times, sadly, even physical harm to our LGBT plus brothers and sisters and siblings. Uh, the church has preached a message of exclusion and condemnation and even damnation to these folks. And and sadly, many churches today still do that. Um, Before I go on about this, I just want to be so clear that at Kindred Church, uh, we not only welcome LGBT plus folks into our community, but we affirm you. Uh, You are beloved children of God, and your presence here with us enriches our community in so many ways. We're grateful for you. You know, sometimes uh, churches like ours, churches that try to be affirming and and inclusive in these ways, um, these sorts of churches can get labeled. They can get labeled as being unbiblical or uh, somehow, you know, that we don't care about Scripture. We don't care about the authority of God's Word. Well, let me tell you that here at Kindred, uh, nothing is further from the truth. We absolutely take the Bible seriously. I mean, it's in the Bible that we meet this God uh, who is... uh, Uh, radically, uh, sometimes even scandalously inclusive with God's love. Uh, It's in the Bible that we discover that Jesus Christ is the fullest revelation of who God is. And it's important to to remember that um, Jesus never made one mention of sexual orientation or gender identity. And really outside of a very few scattered verses elsewhere in Scripture, uh, the rest of Scripture hardly mentions these things either. So how did we get to the place where churches who affirm LGBT plus people um, by that alone can be labeled as being unbiblical and and somehow unfaithful 
to God? How did we get to this place where so many churches and so many Christians think it's okay to exclude LGBT plus people? I think once again, we're faced with this question of where did the church go wrong? Well, we are in week two now of our sermon series called Welcome to the Family. Uh, We're exploring the the core values of Kindred Church. What are those things that we want to shape our community and shape our mission as a church? And how can you join with us? And how can we join with you in pursuing this mission together? If you joined us last week, you may remember that the first core value that we talked about was that here at Kindred, we are fundamentally relational. We try to be relational in everything that we do because we believe in a deeply relational God. And today, we're going to talk about our second core value, and that is that at Kindred Church, we are pursuing inclusive kinship. We are pursuing inclusive kinship. I want to say a bit about what we mean by that. And this relates very directly, I think, to those questions that we've just raised in regard to racial injustice, in regard to the mistreatment of LGBT plus folks. Uh, Where did the church go wrong? Now, obviously, uh, we cannot give a a full answer to that complex question uh, in just one sermon here. And obviously, the the histories and the theologies behind racial injustice on the one hand and and the mistreatment of LGBT plus people on the other hand, uh, those are different histories and different theologies. And so I don't want to conflate the two, and I don't want to oversimplify any of this. But today, I just want to name one way that the church has gotten it wrong in both cases. And I think naming that is going to help us to see more clearly what we mean when we say that here at Kindred Church, one of our core values is that we are pursuing inclusive kinship. So let's look for a minute at this uh, this short passage in Revelation that Manoka read for us. Um, This passage is telling us something really important about God, and we need to pay attention to this. Because I think one of the the biggest mistakes that the church in our society keeps on making is to forget this particular thing that we believe about God. So let's look at it. Um, If you've ever read the book of Revelation, you know that uh, there's a lot of pretty wild stuff in there. Um, Revelation is an ancient genre of literature called apocalyptic. It's highly metaphorical and, and allegorical, and most of it is not meant to be read very literally. Um, but what Revelation is doing, at least in part, is it's, it's giving us this, this kind of vision. It's giving us a vision of uh, what does it look like in heaven? What does it look like when God's kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven? Um, what does that future look like that God is leading us into in this life and certainly beyond this life? Um, so uh, what we see here in, in chapter 7, what we see here is we get this, this vision we get this vision of a, a massive crowd. It's this huge crowd. So many people were told that you couldn't even begin to number all of the people that are gathered together here. And we're told that the most striking thing about this massive crowd of people is that uh, outside of the sheer number of, of folks who are gathered there, the most striking thing about it is, is the diversity of all of these people. Uh, there are people here from uh, all walks of life, from different backgrounds. It says uh, different nationalities, different tribes and regions within nationalities, different cultures, different languages. They're all gathered together here. And yet, despite their differences and across all of their diversity, Uh, These people are gathered together almost like this gigantic family. Uh, The King James version of this passage actually uses the word kindred here. And this gigantic, diverse kindred community is all gathered together around the throne of God. And all these people are doing the same thing. They're they're worshiping God. They're singing and celebrating and dancing and and they're, they're praising. They're worshiping God together. Well, Revelation is telling us, look, church, You're getting this vision to show you what heaven looks like. You're getting this vision to give you a glimpse of what it looks like when God's kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. You're you're, you're getting this vision so that you know what is the future that God is leading all of us into. And that means that this passage is showing us something really important about God. And we cannot miss this. It's that God delights in diversity. God delights in diversity. I'm going to say it a third time because we cannot miss this. God delights in diversity. 
And here scripture tell it, uh, you know, we don't just get this insight about God here towards the end of the Bible. Um, but according to scripture, God has delighted in diversity from the very beginning. Uh, God invented it. You know, I mean, presumably God could have made all of us human beings to look the same and talk the same and have the same culture and the same experiences and, and all. Um, but, but apparently God's just not really into that. God's not into homogeneity. God's not into sameness. What gets God really excited is diversity. I think we see this so clearly embodied in Jesus, don't we? I mean, uh, one of the things that people hated so much about Jesus, one of the things that really rubbed people the wrong way was that Jesus was constantly mixing and mingling with the wrong people. He was constantly going to, to hang out with people who were different, who were other. He just refused to respect those social boundaries and barriers that were put in place to, to keep people apart. It's one of the reasons he got crucified. Uh, and Jesus put his disciples in a lot of really awkward and, and uncomfortable uh, situations because he insisted that they pursue diversity in this same kind of way as well, sometimes even against their will. And as we read through the, the rest of the New Testament over and over and over again, the church is commanded that the church must absolutely non-negotiable. The church must learn to love diversity. Now, why? Because the church is the body of Christ. It's the church's job to, to show and tell in this world who God is, and God delights in diversity. God delights in diversity. Well, here at Kindred Church, as I said, one of our core values is that we are pursuing inclusive kinship. Now, that word kinship, as you may know, uh, refers to a, a family relationship, a familial relationship. The word kindred, the, the name of our church, means family. And uh, here at Kindred, we are pursuing that kind of inclusive family dynamic that we see embodied in this passage in Revelation. We want to delight in diversity the way that God delights in diversity. Uh, we want to create that, that kind of uh, kinship community in the here and now um, because we know that, that that's what God is calling us to do, and that's the kind of future that God is leading us into. Uh, some of you may know of uh, Father Gregory Boyle. Uh, Father Boyle is a Jesuit priest, and um, he's out in Los Angeles. And uh, he has spent much of his life, much of his ministry, working with gang members and, and former gang members, helping them to, to find a way out, to find new direction, to find a new hope in life. Uh, he's an incredible person, and he's got a couple books I'd encourage you to, to check out. Uh, but he talks a lot about this idea of radical kinship. And uh, he's got this quote that really jumps out at me, so I want to I share it with you. Father Boyle says, Radical kinship is the only thing that mattered to Jesus, that we are one. We belong to each other. We belong to each other, and there isn't anybody who doesn't belong, he says. Uh, when we recognize that we serve a God who delights in diversity, that paves the way for this kind of kinship where everyone can find a place to belong. And here at Kindred Church, that's the kind of inclusive kinship that we are pursuing. In particular, we feel called to resist all those forms of racial injustice and segregations and, and divisions that the white church in this country has historically perpetuated. Uh, we just don't think that we're being faithful to God if all of our members, or even if the vast majority of our members, have the same racial identity and, and culture and, and experience. Um, that's not faithful. We're pursuing inclusive kinship. And, you know, having said that, we're not naive about how challenging that is. There is a ton of cultural pressure in the opposite direction. Uh, as the Reverend Dr. King noted famously, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is the most segregated hour of the week in our society. And sadly, that observation, I think, would still hold very true today. So we know this is challenging, but we embrace the challenge. And, and we're committed to being honest and being self-critical about the ways that we're falling short on this. And we have a long way to go, but we're committed to embracing this challenge uh, because we're committed to pursuing inclusive kinship together. Uh, we also are committed to resisting all of those ways that our LGBT siblings have been condemned and, and marginalized by the church. We're an affirming community. We believe that the presence of LGBT plus people in our community enriches us. Um, these are beloved children of God who help to make our community more like that beautiful kindred community that we see depicted in Revelation. 
And I'll be the first to admit that we're not perfect on this. And sometimes we unintentionally get it wrong. But we're committed to growing. We're committed to honest self-reflection because we want to grow into that type of kindred community that we know God is calling us to be. Well, obviously, uh, a whole lot more could be said about all of this. And if you stick with us here at Kindred Church, a whole lot more will be said about all of this. And so I want to invite you to join us. Uh, I want to invite you to, to get connected with our church family here and help us and let us help you to pursue inclusive kinship together. I think we have an extraordinary opportunity right now. You know, as we've seen here lately, uh, the, the, the forces of division and hatred and exclusion in this world are all too active, all too present. And yet we have the opportunity to be a kind of living sign that those forces will be overcome. We have the opportunity together to be a kind of living witness to this God who delights in diversity, to this God who is leading all of us into greater diversity. We have the opportunity to create that kind of kindred community like we know is already being gathered in heaven. We have the opportunity to work together to make that a fuller, deeper reality here on earth. And we do that by pursuing inclusive kinship together. Well, I'll leave you with uh, one last quote here from Father Greg Boyle. He says that if kinship was our goal, we would no longer be promoting justice. We would already be celebrating it. If kinship was our goal, we'd no longer be promoting justice. We'd already be celebrating it. Here at Kindred, uh, we want that kind of kinship to be our goal. We hope you'll join us on the journey. Let me pray for us. O oh God of all creation, you delight in diversity. You made us to be diverse human beings with different appearances and cultures and perspectives, and we know you celebrate that, God. And God, you also call us into uh, loving kinship. You call us into unity with one another, not uniformity, but unity across the, the boundaries and, and the barriers. Um, God, forgive us for the ways that we have gotten this so very wrong. Uh, as individuals, as a community, um, God, we need your help. We need you to cleanse us of the sins of exclusion and division that plague us, God. We need uh, you to make it possible for us to change. Um, God, we ask your blessing on us here at Kindred Church. Help us to pursue inclusive kinship faithfully as we know you've called us to do. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Kindred Church Podcast. If this episode was meaningful to you, consider sharing it with a friend who might also enjoy it. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast here and give us a rating that helps us connect with more listeners. This free resource and all of Kindred's ministries are supported by the generosity of people like you. Your giving changes lives, and it helps us to share and embody God's love. If you'd like to make a donation, you can do so on our website at www.kindrednc.church. Just select Give. You can find lots of ways to connect with our community on our website as well as on our social media pages. Thanks again for listening, and we will catch you next time.